This is Mike, a BGJ black belt, and in this role we had some crazy exchanges, but it ultimately ended up with me getting my ass kicked. My goal by the end of this video is to give you a new tool for your arsenal, regardless of your belt level. Throughout the role, I'll be going over some of the techniques Mike used to make me look like a kids class attendant, and also some of the moves I used to close the skill gap between a black belt and a blue belt. To begin the round, Mike plays very calm, looking for me to make a stupid mistake. He's definitely playing that slow paced counter game, so I need to be careful and not leave any openings. I'll leg pummel into headquarters, a position I'm super familiar with and I've been training exclusively for the last year or so. Because of that, I feel like I can be a step ahead of Mike from this position. I'll launch a diving Kimura, nearly securing his back, but Mike turns out of it quickly and manages to come on top, turning my pass attempt into an effortless sweep on his end. Now we can't let that Kimura roll go unanswered and decides to hit me with the same attack. However, during his jump, I managed to wrap his hip, forcing him to land on top of me and exposing his back in the process. Because of this, he's now back on the defensive. But Mike, still holding the black boat, isn't gonna allow the back take to happen that easily and avoids it by simply shifting his hip offset to my torso. With his back now covered, I revert to deep half guard and I'll work my way back up to top position. I'll dive into a blast cut as soon as I come up. However, Mike stutters me by using his right knee to lift me and create space, then throws me off by disconnecting my hips. And right here is where I hit my most surgical move of the game. So if you wanna learn how to knee cut any belt level, make sure to check out the sequence here. As we reset, I look to first put Mike on his back and open him up to a loose headquarters position. Mike gives me an underhook as he grips De La Hiva, and I use that to jump onto a blast cut. This is where things get really interesting. To finish the pass, I wait for Mike to switch to an underhook, and as he does, I drop my shoulder and go ear to ear with him. I'm also flattening his shoulders onto the mat and creating a wedge to prevent him from looking into the fight using my head. And from here, one of the only ways to escape is this hand by either pushing my hips away or capturing this foot. I'll keep myself upright until I capture the arm. Then I drop my hips and I use my outside leg to free my heel and finish the pass. Now to work towards the submission. Mike starts pressing up against my hips, and as stated earlier, that is one of the only ways to escape, so it's critical that I address that fast. As I do, I actually find a shin pin on his arm, and I'll try to rotate into an armbar. But Mike quickly springs up and manages to press my leg away just in time. Now it's his turn to start putting me in my place. He begins taking control by first crushing down into me, trying to win the battle for inside position and chest to chest connection. Fortunately, I'm able to keep my frames inside and work my knees back to guard but Mike quickly changes his strategy from pressure to loose outside passing and starts the chain with a leg drag, switching to a leg weave before cutting the angle and settling down in north-south. And now the game is being played in his favor. You'll notice at every opportunity I have to escape, there's a trap waiting for me at the next door. In this instance, as I turn out, Mike uses that to expose my back and lock onto a gift wrap. As he falls back, I jump away from his hooks and look to come up into turtle. However, he follows that up with a crucifix entry. To advance, Mike then uses the threat of the choke to split up my defenses and uses that feint to attach his first hook onto my back. I'll move into turtle again, but he continues to walk me through to a worse position by chopping at my knee and now he throws his leg across my body into a body triangle and works to isolate my top arm. Everything, every time I think I'm out, you just keep coming. It's not until right here where I finally find a place to breathe and get back both of the limbs that were isolated. However, we really see the height of a black belt as Mike once again finds a way towards the finish and locks onto a Kimura grip. As I flail helplessly, he slowly takes his time, working into a crucifix of sorts and finishes the Kimura. Alright, so by now, I hope you guys have learned some new text to add to your game, whether that's the blast cut, Kimura roll, or how to get submitted in style. With that being said, if you want to watch unedited, high quality BGJ content, check out my second channel, Karsa BGJ Rolls, for the unedited footage. I'm almost at 1000 subscribers, so do me a favor and help me get monetized over there.